The Southern is our next port of call, disembarking from the steamer at Ride Pierhead like so many holidaymakers between the wars. We'll first look at the self-contained pier tramway line, which boasted these little Drury trams. They'd been provided in 1927 by the Southern, which had taken over the tramway three years earlier. The original horse-drawn cars were used as trailers. The island was enjoying the peak of its prosperity as a holiday destination at this time. The availability of holidays with pay had opened up the trade, and over two million visitors a year were crossing the Solent and Spithead to enjoy its unique atmosphere. However, most of them came in the two peak summer months, and therein lay the foundation of the extensive island railway system and the problems of operating it. The former LSWR class 02 tanks were transferred to the island by the Southern Railway from the beginning of the 1920s, further examples being taken over by ferry in the 1930s. They proved to be the perfect motive power for the Isle of Wight lines, being able to handle the heaviest trains the lines could cope with. The transfer of the O2s was part of the Southern's modernization scheme for the island railways, but it was all done on a very tight budget, using second-hand equipment. Although small, the Isle of Wight had supported three independent railways, the Isle of Wight Central, its main line running through Ryde to Newport and Cowes, the impoverished Freshwater and Yarmouth Railway, and, the most prosperous, the Isle of Wight Railway, serving Sandown, Shanklin and Ventnor. At Ryde Shed, we see the changeover from the traditional locomotives to the new O2s, the youngest of which was built in 1892, number 17 Sea View, dating from December 1891. Nineteen years older was Roxall, a Bayer Peacock 240 tank of the Isle of Wight Railway, seen alongside another of its successors. This was the last survivor of the indigenous island locomotives, being withdrawn in 1933. Two four O's had become the effective standard for both the Isle of Wight and Isle of Wight Central Railways, but due to their age, replacement was a necessity for the Southern. The O2s were the product of the fertile mind of William Adams of the London and South Western Railway, most of whose beautifully proportioned four four O's were to be withdrawn in the 1930s. This X6 is seen on Bournemouth Shed alongside a Drummond M7, which took over some of the duties of the transferred O2s, number 47 being fitted in 1930 with motor train gear. Most of Drummond's successful designs survived intact through the 30s, including the L11 440s. The 40 members of this class were a mixed traffic version of the legendary T9 Greyhounds.